What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to Automotive Life. My name is Lucky and today welcome to Workshop Wednesday. This is going to be our first episode. We're going to start getting more hands on in the shop now that we actually have the somewhat of our studio set up just for actual the our repairs. Back here is where we do all the regular business stuff but everything basically back here is for the studio. So we want to start doing more in-depth videos to let you guys see how we buy cars, how we fix cars and everything else. And I also wanted to start building some fun projects. So today I wanted to announce our very first project. It is this beautiful 1968 Mustang Coupe. Now I bought this thing for 1500 bucks and I'm going to show you why. It is an absolute pile of crap, but it has lots of potential because this 68 Coupe is going to be a 68 Fastback here very shortly. Now, today I wanted to make this video, we're gonna go over most of the planning because everybody, when they get these cars, they get super excited. They wanna start tearing it apart, chopping it up, ordering motors and wheels and stuff like that. All wrong. We're gonna show you actually how to plan out your project so you don't set up yourself for failure and hopefully build some success every time you get a step on building your car. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of times when people get cars like this, they get super excited. Like I said, they'll go out and they'll buy an engine for this. They'll go buy wheels before even starting on any of the bodywork or anything else. We're gonna talk about doing things in different stages so at any time during the build, you can actually sell your car and whatever mods you're doing right now will increase the value. A lot of people get cars like this, they tear them all apart in their garage, they buy $30,000 in new parts and then when they try to sell it they're only getting five ten grand because this car is split into a thousand parts or pieces and nobody's wanting to give you the value of what you're actually going to spend so what we're going to do first on this particular vehicle is we're actually going to go ahead and chop off the back end now i'm going to go ahead flip the camera on and we're going to talk about some of the things we're going to do to the vehicle now here is the mustang coupe if you look at it on the outside it looks okay we pulled out the motor we don't need the motor transmission we sent that off a lot of this frame here is, is pretty much banged up and beat up. So as you can tell, like I said, I spent $1,500 and this is a $1,500 car. Now we're coming to the best part of the vehicle. If you look right here in the quarter panel, look at that Bondo, look at that bodywork. look at this. We got screws, rivets. This sheet metal is literally just laid over um, other sheet metal. You kind of go around here to the other side of the car. It's very similar sheet metal screwed in you can see how it's just overlapping right here on the sides as well as here if you look in the inside here the inside's pretty much empty it's just a good shell that's what we need because we're really not going to use anything else in here just the bucket seats we may put racing seats in just depending on which way we go if you look right here there's frame rails already been cut off they've already had a little bit of rust but we're going to go ahead and chop those off here in a minute you look at the fender wheels are going away we're giving those back. Now, here's the main reason why I got it for so cheap. If you guys can see that, the frame rails are literally rusted out. A lot of the stuff down here on the bottom, I'll show you right here, is completely rusted out. You can see the battery tray there. A lot of rust down here. Now, a lot of people are wondering, well, shit, that's a lot of work. Why would you want something like this if it's all rusted out. And the reason why is because we are actually gonna be cutting a majority of this vehicle off. Now, what we're actually gonna do is, right here on the center part of the line, we're actually gonna cut from here back. So everything, we're gonna take the door off, and so everything from here back is gonna be completely gone. That's where the fastback conversion is gonna go. We're gonna cut off the whole back end, and then also right here from the cowl forward, we're gonna be cutting all this off because we're not gonna use any of these suspension, we're not gonna use this, we're gonna have independent rear suspension, we're gonna go ahead and build a frame. But what we're gonna do is, like I said, you never wanna tear apart a car and chop it all up before you actually have a plan. So that's what this video is entailed. So we're gonna go ahead and walk over here and I'm gonna show you how we plan and prep for some of this stuff. Now, when you start building a, a project, I always recommend getting like a big piece of cardboard like this, where you can literally lay out and put everything you wanna do on the vehicle. So as we put up here, we're starting on a 68 Mustang Fastback. And our, our project goal, or our dollar amount is probably gonna be close to I'd say about $41,000. So I'm gonna put 41,000 right there. Now don't hold me to it because our goal is to get it for a little bit cheaper than this. But I always tell people, 
put a realistic goal of what you're gonna put into the car. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is before we buy wheels, before we buy you know, uh, motors and transmissions and suspension, all that stuff, we wanna do something to the car that's gonna make it worth value every step we go. And one of the biggest things is turning it from a coupe to an actual fastback. So our first plan of attack, we're gonna write here on the section is number one, we are gonna purchase the fastback kit and we are actually gonna install it. Now, the reason why we're doing this particular thing first before buying it is because right now the coupe, it's not worth that much. Like right now there's a bunch of these for sale for like 1500, two grand, beat up, rust buckets, whatever the case is. The second you put that sheet metal as a fastback, now it's worth eight, 12, $15,000. I see rusted out fastback shells going for over 15K on eBay. So just from us putting this $5,000 fastback kit onto this Mustang, we're almost tripling our investment. So that's why we're doing this first. After we do this, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start working on more of the sheet metal. That's gonna be the second thing. Everything we're gonna do is focused on not only moving forward with the project, but if for some reason you, you lose your job, you, you lose interest in the build, it's still something somewhat put together and desirable that somebody else wants to take. I see way too many people, they buy these cars just like this. Like I said, they turn the pieces and they're scattered all across their shop or their garage. They buy, you know, tons and tons of parts from Summit Racing and all this other stuff. And so they got stuff scattered everywhere. And when people come to look at it, all you see is little baggies everywhere. You can't put a price on it. Where if we just focus on the shell and get the shell as nice as we can, before we go and do the suspension, the motor, the wheels and everything else, it will pay massive dividends because if for some reason, let's say I'm doing this project and you guys don't wanna see the end of it, or maybe it's not that popular. If the shell's put together, when it's sitting here in the shop, people will come look at it. People will give me offers. I can always liquidate it if I have to, as long as it's somewhat complete and we did something desirable to make people want it. So when you're doing your build, I know logic tells you, well, we're gonna strip it down and we're gonna paint every bolt. We're gonna go through every nut. We're gonna reconstruct it. Don't. If it's running and driving, leave it. The only reason I took the motor and transmission out of here is because the guy gave it to me for a thousand dollars cheaper because I gave him the drivetrain. And I knew 100% I didn't need it. And I think the motor was locked up anyways. It wasn't worth anything, but he said the motor and train was worth a thousand bucks. I'm like, good, you can have it back. And that's how we're able to purchase it for $1,500. But like I said, we want to stick to this plan. Now, normally I would write this on the windshield, but unfortunately this windshield, once we start cutting and welding, it's probably going to get broken. And we're going to get it pulled out. So as we take this thing apart, you know, this is a classic car. A lot of the original parts that we're taking off of this, we're not going to throw away. So when I cut the roof and the quarter panels off, even though they look like banged up dog shit, I'm actually going to offer them to other people in a local uh, Las Vegas Mustang Facebook group. If they want to take them, if they need them, or if they're building a race car or they just need some sheet metal, I'll go ahead and do that. We try to reuse a lot of the stuff because the one part that you're throwing away may be the one thing that's stopping somebody from finishing their project. And a lot of these hardcore OG people want it OEM everything, like even though these fenders and shit are beat to hell, and I'm probably gonna do fiberglass fenders that are more lightweight so we can do the wider body kit, um, I'm gonna sell these. And I know people will buy them just because they're OEM. You know, they got the, the serial number stamped in them. You know, you can tell pretty much there's the original ones that came on there and people die for this stuff. So when you start turning apart these cars, don't throw everything away. Always offer it to another collector because they may be looking for something like this. And there are people out there that will actually take the time and restore this stuff. Because like I said, little by little, this stuff's getting harder and harder to get. And there's not a lot of OEM stuff. There's a lot of remanufactured stuff. Even like the fenders we've had on some of these other ones we did in the past, where we did all these like Eleanor kits and stuff. The fenders fit like crap, where the OEM ones, they fit perfectly. So let's go ahead and get back to the actual sheet. So now that we actually have this in there, if you remember some of my car flipping videos, we always talk about visualizing your actual list. Now, if you look, this is a really long piece of cardboard. It's nothing fancy, it's nothing cutting edge. Do this and keep it in your shop. Don't do a spreadsheet. Don't put something in your notebook. You need to put it on the wall so you can look at that shit every single day and realize how much money you're wasting on stupid stuff you're buying from Amazon. So as soon as you buy the kit, like this Mustang kit that we're talking about, it's $5,300 with shipping. Once I put that up there, I'm gonna take it off of my actual investment. I'm gonna say, okay, well, we're at 41K. We already spent $5,300, which we ordered the kit already. We're just waiting for it to come in. That's what we're gonna do. And I'm not gonna start chopping this thing up 
until it actually comes in because like I said, you don't wanna start doing and butchering a bunch of stuff before you get everything in necessary. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk over here and we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the first steps that we're gonna do. Now we talked about cutting off the front clip, which is pretty much right here. So everything from basically the cow four here, we're gonna go ahead and chop off. Now for the roof, we're gonna go about six inches back and put a little line here. And that's exactly where we're actually gonna cut it off. So once we cut this off, we're gonna go ahead and remove the doors. We're gonna go ahead and take off these quarter panels and we're gonna basically cut the roof here. We're gonna cut these two pieces here and take out the back windshield. And like I said, this is still, the roof is still good. There's no rust in it. The back window is actually in really good shape, but as a fastback, we can't use this window. So we're gonna go ahead and give this to somebody else. So if you are a Mustang collector and you're here in Vegas or California and you want any of this stuff, it is yours for absolutely free. All that I ask is you come pick it up because I'm not gonna keep it. Deck lid's in good shape. You're gonna get rid of that too. But as we start moving forward to this, we're gonna actually cut all this stuff off and we're gonna expose the actual floor pans. And that's when we're gonna do some repairs and everything else. But before we do this, the next video, by the time uh, next Wednesday rolls around, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull out all the seats. We're gonna go ahead and do some uh, X bracing inside here to frame it up. So as we cut this roof off, we keep the rigidity of the chassis straight and flush. So as we add the new sheet metal on here, it'll be able to be you know, uh, accessible and, and straight. So as we add the sheet metal, nothing comes out of whack. It's all lined up, it's good to go. Now, once I get the, the confirmation that the, the tracking or the shipment is only maybe a few days away, I'm actually gonna do a second video and start filming us actually cutting out some of the rust spots. Now, a lot of the stuff here in the pan is not that bad. It's a lot of surface rust. But while I have this whole thing cut off and it's exposed, now is the time to go ahead and take that off. Now, I'm not gonna put like a planned budget up here. I have an estimated thing in my head of what I know I'm gonna spend. But with these classic cars, I always tell people it's like surprise surgery. If you don't know what you're gonna get, until you actually start tearing it apart because I can't tell you how many cars we've done in the past that, oh, it's a clean car, no rust, and you lift up the floor plans and it's all fiberglass, their license plate, which means they put a bunch of random sheet metal or Bondo. I literally, there's a Cadillac out here that we got, it's like a 58 or 59, full of Bondo. The whole quarter panel is Bondo. Like this is pretty bad. You can see this right here. Like this is all flaking off. That one is five times that, like the whole quarter panel is Bondo. If I smack it with a hammer, it would just break off and fall down. So, you know, you wanna keep this in mind as you're moving forward and start looking at those parts and this pricing. Don't get too ahead of yourself. Don't get anxious, just say, hey, you know what? Um, we got $5,300 for this. We're gonna have to spend another maybe $1,200 in sheet metal for the floor plan and maybe another $200 in welding supplies. Write that down on your sheet on you know, like estimated costs, whatever else, put it down there and then stick to it. And every day, like I said, you look at that list and it starts to grow. And then if you really wanna be savvy, you can do your to-do list once you get it all buttoned up. That's what the other half is. Once we get all the parts, we get this, we flip it around and then we start our small to-do list. But we'll get into that much, much later. But the reason why I wanted to do this video and start our workshop Wednesdays is because like I said, just today, like when I bought this, there was tons of people at this guy's place that was buying all his projects. They're all like this, they're all torn apart, shits everywhere. And I really felt bad and I asked the guy, you have everything. He had, I actually bought two of these. I have a 68 and a 67. You're gonna see the 67 shell probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, but that's what we're gonna have here in the shop. So we're gonna have the 68 and the 67 side by side. So this way we can do the fastback conversion on both of them. But this guy has like six of these things. And I asked him, how come he didn't take all these and make into one? He instead bought a bunch of parts for this one, bought a bunch of parts for this one, bought a bunch of parts for this other one, and winded up selling me two of them. And now all the parts that he bought for these two, he should be able to fix just one of his other ones. So he's slowly getting on the track, but I hate to see people not finish projects like this. And a lot of these cars sit in people's driveways for years, decades. And I'm like, hey, I tell you a quick story. When I was 17 years old, I remember walking by this guy's house and I saw a 68 must, or excuse me, 68 Camaro sitting in his backyard. And I knocked on the guy's door. I was like, hey, I'm in my, uh, you know, my senior year of high school. I love the Camaro. Um, can I clean your yard? Can I fix it? Can I, can I work it off? You know, can I do something? Guy's like, no, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna restore it, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, I graduated, came back that summer, car still sitting there. 
before it had all the front end and all the glass was good, knocked on the gentleman's door and I was like, hey, sir, I really, really like this car. I noticed they broke the headlights, they stole the grill. I still really want the car. Can I please get it from you and restore it? Um, I have a few thousand bucks, so I'll just give it to you. No, no, I'm gonna restore it, I'm gonna restore it. Fast forward, I'm 25 now. I go back to the guy's place to visit my parents. It's still there, sitting in the backyard. Now it's got a little bit of a tree growing through the bottom of it because it's been sitting there for so long. Once again, I asked the gentleman, please, sir, let me purchase it off of you. You know, I love this car. And, and by then the fenders were gone. They stole the hood. You know, everything was kind of starting to rust. I'm like, the car's falling apart. It's going to cost you double the amount than when I first met you. And the guy was very rude. Forget it. Don't bug me anymore. I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to restore it. Fast forward. I'm 35 years old. I knock on this gentleman's door and I'm like, sir, let me buy your car. And this guy now, he's, he's in a respirator. He could barely come to the door. His nurse was helping him walk. And I was like, look, I don't want this car to, to just go to the wayside. Let me fix it. And I promise you when it's done, I'll bring it back and we'll go for a drive. Guy said once again, no, don't want to sell it. It's worth money. I'm going to restore it one day. Fast forward a year ago. I went over there to the gentleman's house, knocked on his door, and I saw all the grass was cleaned up and uh, they chopped down all the trees and everything was good. Lady answered the door and she's like, oh yeah, my, this was my father's house. Unfortunately, he passed. And I told her the story. I was like, you know, I'm, I spent some time with your father and knocked on the door, seemed like a nice guy. I've been trying to get this Camaro, you know, and he wouldn't sell it to me. There's a damn tree growing through it and he still wouldn't sell it to me. She, when she came in after he passed, basically chopped up the car, had the landscapers chop it up and throw it away and got rid of all the other classic cars that are in her backyard. They scrapped them all and, and smashed them. So the moral of the story is, when you see cars like this, if you're a car guy, try to rescue them. And also reason with the people, just like with the gentleman I got these from, I was like, sir, you have 10 of these cars. If you take your effort and focus on one or two, instead of all 10, I promise you, you can finish a few of them. And that's what he's doing. And so now I get a chance to bring this back because this has been sitting in a rust field in Texas for years. And then he brought it up into Vegas and it's been sitting here for years, just rusting away. So, you know, my goal is to bring this thing back to life, this 68, also the 67 that we have. But this is some of the fun projects that we wanna set you guys up with and show you how to do. And this will play into whatever you wanna do. If you wanna be a, a guy on the side that fixes cars in your garage, if you wanna become a dealer and flip classic cars, or if you wanna rent these things out for your rental car business, or if you just wanna maybe tinker with some of these things in your backyard and actually build these for fun because I'll be honest, if I could live in anywhere in the country, live out in the boonies, have a huge warehouse and have like 20 of these things going at all times, that would be my dream. Unfortunately, I love the Vegas lifestyle and I like to go out so I could never live in a small town or live out in the country. But you could literally do this and make a great living. Now, the reason why I showed you the $42,000 is my goal once I'm done with this and we put the chassis in, that we're putting a Coyote motor in it and everything else, I'm guessing it's going to be worth about seventy-five to eighty-five thousand dollars. That's if the market doesn't go even more stupid, and that's what I believe what we're going to get out of this after we're done doing all the things we want to do to it. Now, if we do that and we double our money, fantastic. Even if we make ten thousand dollars above it, if you guys learn something from it, I like building stuff like this. I stopped doing this years and years ago because people don't want to pay for it anymore. So I might as well do it for myself. I might as well do it for YouTube. So anyways, this is Workshop Wednesday. So every Wednesdays, we're going to start doing stuff like this. This is one of the projects. Um, the other project we have is a Mercedes 190E. I'm in the middle of buying that right now. And then we also have an Audi TT. Uh, we're going to take the Audi TT and we're going to lift it up and make like a four wheel drive TT. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because we're selling the smart car on Cars and Bid. So if you want to buy the smart car, definitely check out Cars and Bids. It's going to be up there, I think, next week. So no reserve. We're just going to let it roll. So definitely check that out. I love the smart car. It was an amazing car. But, you know, I had my fun times with it. But now that I'm building stuff like this, I want to get back to building something. So I only want to drive the stuff that I personally built. So we're going to go ahead. Get rid of the smart car, wish it well. Hopefully when you guys buy it and we're gonna start building crazy fun projects like this. But if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. I answer every single one myself personally, none of my staff. Also, if you have any um, like projects, like if you have some 67 Mustang or 68 Mustang parts, let me know, I'd love to buy them from you. Um, if you have questions on these type of cars, even if you have anything like, I'm still looking for a Mercedes 190E. If you have one, I don't care if it's a piece of crap and the motor doesn't run, I need one because I just need the shell because we're going to do a bunch of stuff to it.
We might keep it original or we might do like an LS swap. Not really sure yet, but we want a 190E so we can start fixing it up. So if you have one, reach out to me. Um, that's pretty much it for now. Make sure you subscribe, click the like button. Um, it helps you find more amazing people like yourselves and enjoy your automotive content. Also follow us on Instagram, automotive.live, and we'll see you guys next video.